we've developed a number of data fields designed to help you perform in real time. And in the last part of today's video, I'll be showing you some of these exert specific metrics and data fields. Ultimately, I hope I can convince you to download and install and utilize some of these data fields in real time during your activities. I'll start off this section by talking about exert's focus data field as well as difficulty score. I'll also talk about the fat and carb estimations from our data field and how you can utilize that information during your rides. I'll also talk about the XSS and exert equivalent power data field. And I'll wrap up this section by talking about the cadence optimizer data field. The first exert specific metric that I'd like to talk about is focus. Those of you using Garmin devices, once again, will be able to find this from the Connect IQ store. And you'll notice it'll look something like the screenshot I have on the right. I first introduced the concept of focus in the first part of the Mastering Exert Improve video. But to refresh your memory, focus is a measure of intensity. If I were to explain it using older methods, you could think of your focus duration as looking at the time spent across all of your different power zones throughout your activity and reducing it into a single value. Now, this measure of intensity uh, is only half of the story. We also want to know how variable your efforts were throughout the ride. And Exert measures this through a metric that we call specificity. But I'll talk more about this in just a minute. I'd first like to talk about how you can affect your focus duration. Uh, so once you've installed this data field on your Garmin, uh, how, how does it change or how does it react to the efforts that you're doing? In general, you'll notice that when you ride hard above threshold, the focus duration is going to start decreasing. And when you ride easier, the focus duration will increase. For example, if you were to ride perfectly at your five minute power, the data field will head towards five minutes. But as you start pedaling easier during a recovery, the data field will start increasing again. Your focus duration will, will go back up. One last note that I'd like to point out is that your focus duration will only change when you're actually performing work. So when you're coasting or stopped at the cafe on that weekend ride, your focus duration won't change. What I'd like to do next is show you how focus and specificity work hand in hand to describe your riding. In this demonstration, I'd like to help you interpret the information being shared from Exert's focus data field. And to do this, I'll be showing a variety of different MPA charts along with their associated Garmin data fields. We'll start off by looking at a pure endurance activity. As you'll see on screen, this activity was performed uh, completely below threshold. There's no hard efforts here. So if we were to look at the Garmin data field for an activity like this, you'll see that the focus data field is displayed in green dashes, indicating that all of the XSS from this activity is on your low intensity system. There haven't been any efforts above threshold. So this would be a pure endurance ride. Now, what would happen if we performed a similar activity, but added in a couple of short hard sprints at the end? Well, the MPA chart might look something like this. And if we were to look at the Garmin data field, what we'll see now is that the focus duration has started decreasing. Remember on the last slide, I mentioned that focus duration will decrease when you push above threshold. So we see that focus is starting to decrease here and that the color has shifted to in a yellowish orange color. This is indicating the specificity of the ride, uh, which is for this ride, super polar. By that, we mean that the overwhelming majority of this ride, as you can see, is performed below threshold. There are very, very short moments above threshold. So the specificity is low. Now, what would happen if we started to add more high intensity efforts throughout this activity? Say something like this. Well, as we'll see from the focus data field on the left here is that focus duration will continue to decrease as you add more of these hard efforts in. And now you can see that the focus duration is approximately five minutes and that the color has shifted from orange to black. Once again, indicating a change in the specificity from superpolar to polar specificity. 
from this MPA chart, we can still see that most of this activity is performed below threshold, uh, but we're starting to see more efforts above threshold. And if we were to follow this, uh, this train of logic and add more high intensity efforts throughout this ride, we might see an activity like this. And if we were to look at the Garmin data field for this activity, we'll see that the focus duration is still approximately five minutes, but the color has shifted from black to blue, indicating another increase in the specificity rating from polar to a mixed specificity rating. As we'll see in this activity, there are far more mixed efforts above and below threshold, so that giving it the mixed specificity rating. And if we continue this line of, of, of thinking and we continue to add high intensity intervals and we continue to remove endurance efforts, we might end up with an activity that looks something like this. And if we were to look at the Garmin data field for an activity like this, we'll see that the focus remains approximately five minutes but the color has shifted from blue to green, indicating an increase in the specificity from mixed to pure. Uh, so this last activity uh, is very specific. This is why we give it the name specificity. It's very specific to your five minute power. And in fact, that's the last point that I'd like to leave you with from this activity. Uh, it's a bit abstract, but I want you to, to, to stick with me here. The last three activities that we looked at all had a focus duration of about five minutes. However, if I were to ask you which of these three activities is the best for training your five minute power, it would be the activity with five minute pure specificity. Why? Because more of the XSS in this activity on the bottom is accumulated near your five minute power. Whereas for the mixed and for the polar specificity ride, more of that XSS is accumulated at endurance efforts. And in fact, we, this line of thinking helps explain why uh, Ronestad efforts or BA efforts, uh, the micro style of intervals, are so potent for you. Most often, those Ronestads or BA workouts will result in a pure four to six minute focus. Hopefully this demonstration gives you a little bit more insight into how focus and specificity work together to help describe your riding. The second part of the focus data field is difficulty score. And this number corresponds to the shaded difficulty line that you'll see in the MPA chart of your activities. Difficulty score is calculated using your MPA, your power and your fitness signature and it allows Exert to assign a high intensity difficulty score to any of your activities. The max difficulty score during your activity is used to provide a diamond rating. This is the same rating that we use for Exert workouts. So you can use difficulty score to compare uh, how hard your group ride or your Zwift race was relative to different workouts in the Exert library. Now, if you haven't noticed already, the, this data field is also color coded. The difficulty score in blue indicates that your difficulty score is rising and a green color indicates that difficulty is uh, decreasing. So how do you use this data field? I'll provide a couple quick examples. Uh, for me personally, since this data field represents high intensity difficulty, I'll keep an eye on my difficulty score during my endurance rides and I aim to keep the difficulty score around 65 or less. Another way that you can use this data field is to assess how strong you're riding on a particular day. If I'm riding and I'm doing a Ronestad or I'm on a group workout um, in this hard efforts and I see a difficulty score above 150, I know that I'm riding really strong that day and I'm riding to the full potential of my fitness signature. Uh, if I'm riding hard and, or I'm not feeling great during that activity and I see a relatively lower difficulty score, so uh, like 75 or 80, uh, but I'm not feeling well, it, it could indicate that perhaps I need a couple of easier days of riding um, and I need some more recovery. So those are a couple ways that you can use this difficulty score during your activities. Next up, we have fat and carbs. Exert can estimate the amount of fat and carbs utilized during your activities using your power data and your unique fitness signature. Those of you using Garmin devices can 
configure this data field to display either the total amount of fat and carb used during your activity, as is seen in the bottom of this screenshot here, or you can configure it to display the current burn rate of fat and carbs in watts. Just like the rest of our Garmin data fields, we've also color coded this data field, where a red color underneath fat or carbs indicates that at your current power, you're burning a lot of either fat or carbs. In general, you'll find that you'll burn the most fat around your LTP, and you'll burn mostly carbs at and above your threshold power. I'd like to quickly point out how you can utilize these data fields during your activities. Consider the estimations from Exert's fat and carb data field as some additional information that you have available to you as part of your nutritional or your pacing strategy. For example, you can use the carb portion of the data field to help replace carbs as you burn through them. Most people can absorb between 60 and 90 grams of carbs per hour, so you can monitor how many carbs you're burning and when you burn through 30 or 60 grams of carbs, you can aim to replace those with your gel uh, of choice or perhaps a carbohydrate drink mix. What this will do is help preserve those precious glycogen stores for later in the ride and help you avoid that dreaded bonk. Now, going along those same lines, on your longer rides, say three hours or more, you'll want to generally avoid the carbs data field going red, indicating that you're quickly burning through those uh, carbohydrates. Uh, if you're doing that too long on your long rides, you may find that you'll, you could be at risk of bonking later into that activity. I'll also point out a general rule of thumb, uh, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of grams of fat to grams of carbohydrates burned uh, is generally a pretty sustainable pace for relatively longer rides. Now that's just a general rule of thumb and you can actually experiment a little bit with that and see what works best for you. Next up we have XSS and XEP. You can see the data field on the bottom half of the Edge 1030 screenshot on the right here. As I've mentioned before, XSS is a measure of strain put upon your body during an activity. In general, the longer or the harder that your ride is, the greater the XSS will be. XSS is important in EXERT because we use that to calculate your training load as well as your training surplus and deficit. Underneath the XSS, uh, you'll see EXERT's equivalent power or XEP. This is a form of averaged power that aims to include efforts performed under fatigue, so those efforts are weighed a little more heavily. I'd also like to point out that your XEP does include stops uh, and zeros, so don't be surprised to see your XEP slowly drifting down during that cafe stop. I would like to spend a minute or two explaining how you can use the XSS and focus data fields uh, to achieve your training recommendations without needing to follow structured workouts. If you'll recall, the Adaptive Training Advisor will provide a recommended target focus and XSS in addition to the recommended workouts. So I have a screenshot here from the Adaptive Training Advisor. Um, this is actually uh, from, from my Adaptive Training Advisor. And as you can see, uh, it's showing that I'm in the peak phase uh, of my training and it's recommending a punctuer or a four minute focus and a total of 155 XSS. So rather than trying to follow a structured workout outside, instead I can use the data fields on my Garmin and aim to achieve a four minute focus and accumulate 155 XSS. You might be thinking, well, how do you achieve a four minute focus? Underneath the focus type, the adaptive training advisor will display interval targets. This is showing my four minute power. So I know in order to achieve a four, minute po uh, a four minute focus, I'll need to do lots of riding near 371 watts. And the more riding that I do near 371 watts will increase my specificity, thinking back to that earlier slide. So ultimately I can use this Garmin data field and aim to achieve a green, approximately four minute focus up top and aim to achieve approximately 155 XSS on the bottom. 
and I don't need to worry about following a structured workout from my Garmin or, or trying to hold a particular power when this hills. Instead, I can just freestyle, uh, freestyle an activity and know that I'm still achieving my, uh, ad- my recommended training from the Adaptive Training Advisor. Hopefully that makes sense. The last of the Garmin data fields that I'd like to discuss today is our BioShift Cadence Optimizer. As the name suggests, the whole idea behind this data field is to recommend an optimal cadence for you based on your current power output. You might be asking, well, how does the data field know what my optimal cadence is? First of all, the data field learns from your personal cadence preferences. Whether you're more of a grinder or a spinner, the data field will display a flashing gear icon on the left-hand side as it learns your personal cadence preferences. In addition to your preferences, the data field assumes that at relatively lower intensities, your cadence should be lower, and at relatively higher intensities, your cadence should be higher. So if you're trying to smash out a 600 watt sprint, the data field is going to recommend a higher uh, cadence than if you're noodling along at 100 watts. So how does the data field actually work? Well, you'll see your live cadence uh, data in RPM in the center of the data field. And on the right hand side, you'll see a vertical gauge. When your current cadence at your current power output is near an optimal value, you'll see a horizontal green bar centered in that vertical gauge. If your cadence is either too high or too low based on your current power output, this horizontal bar will shift either up or down and telling you that your cadence is too high or too low. The farther the bar deviates from the center, the farther your cadence is from ideal. Although we have this feature only available on Garmin devices, those of you who have used the Android or iOS based uh, app for recording workouts might have noticed something similar in the remote player, uh, where a green band indicates an optimal cadence for the target power uh, during your workouts. This brings us to the lesson conclusion for today's video. I wanted to quickly recap the three main topics that we discussed. In the first part of the video, I talked about your MPA in real time and how you can use that information to make informed decisions during your ride or perhaps to generate a breakthrough. In the second part of the video, I talked about how we can apply your MPA in meaningful ways. For example, the Exert Segment Hunter or Exert Smart Adaptive Workouts. And as we just saw in this last section, I also talked about many of the Exert specific data fields that are available to you. At this point, I wanted to congratulate you on completing the Mastering Exert video series. And I hope that you found my content helpful, interesting, and and that you've become a more proficient exerter and that over the course of these three videos, I've helped you discover your fitness signature, improve, and perform. Thanks, everyone.